Welcome to this overview of what's new in Carlson 2020. This release runs on AutoCAD versions 2020 through 2015. It also comes with IntelliCAD 9.2 built into the install. Carlson 2020 requires a 64-bit computer. There's no more 32-bit install. This release has over 250 new or upgraded commands. I will cover some highlights starting with general commands and then by module. IntelliCAD 9.2 has an optional start page for opening recent drawings and quick links. There is a new selection set manager for using a combination of CAD properties to make a selection set. The tool palettes have been updated with common Carlson commands. More DGN support is complete for cells, fonts, and line styles. To see more of what's new with IntelliCAD 9.2, check out the IntelliCAD YouTube channel. Open Drawings has a new map view for showing your geolocated drawings. You can zoom on the map or search an address, and then pick on a tag to see the drawing properties, and open the drawing. You can geolocate a drawing in the Drawing Setup command by entering the address or by setting the grid projection. File Selection has a larger file list with the ability to sort the files by name, size, or date by picking on the header. Settings Migration Wizard is a new way to transfer Carlson and CAD settings between Carlson installations. So if you've got your Carlson 2019 set up and running well for you, this new tool will bring those settings over to the new release. The first time you run Carlson 2020, the Migration Wizard gives you the chance to transfer the settings. You can also run the Migration Wizard anytime from the Settings menu. You can also use the Migration Wizard to save a settings file and then load this file onto other computers. Carlson Academy is a new online learning system that has courses organized by topics. You can log in to Carlson Academy using your same login as the Carlson Customer Portal. You need to be current with your Carlson Maintenance program to have full access to Carlson Academy. 2D Linework Library is designed to help solve the problem of line work meant to be at zero elevation getting elevated. For example, a polyline is drawn at zero elevation, but then a grip edit of a vertex snaps it to an elevation as shown here. This new command sets line work to zero by layer and can be set up to work automatically. The 3D viewer now has multiple clip planes for top, bottom, near, and far. You can screen pick the clip plane location or enter an elevation. There's also a new x-ray view that makes the surface transparent in a window around the cursor so you can see what's under the surface such as pipes. Surface texture has a new method to set the textures by the surface slope amounts. When using mtext with the option to hide drawing under labels, the mtext background mask is now set instead of creating a separate wipeout entity. This is used in commands like triangulate and contour and leader with text. ServeNet has a new interface of a doc dialog that allows you to see the results directly in the drawing. You can also now screen pick on the ServeNet points and lines, which links back to the ServeNet data to show the related input measurements along with the ServeNet adjustment results. You can also edit the standard error for any measurement. When running in IntelliCAD, there are context-sensitive right-click menu functions. When a point entity is highlighted, the right-click menu has the Edit Point Attribute and Move Point Attributes with Leader commands. When an annotation label is highlighted, the right-click menu has several annotation functions. Point Attribute Manager is a new command to help manage your blocks that control the point attribute layout. You can review and edit your layouts and save them to share with others. Field to Finish now supports multiple vertical offsets on the same polyline. Parking is a new special code for quickly drawing parking stall lines. XSCT is a new special code for defining a cross-section template on the fly in the field. Label Station Offset has a few new label controls 
including the ability to draw brackets around the label as square parentheses, arrow, or curly styles, and as single or multiple. There are several new dynamic link options for 3D entities. Editing Carlson points updates any triangulation surface using that point for input. Slope labels update when the reference surface is changed. Editing a polyline vertex elevation updates both the elevation label and any triangulation surface using that polyline for input. Editing the polyline elevation also updates any pad elevation labels. Triangulation Surface Manager now uses our Carlson surface object to display the tin lines while editing the tin, which is much faster than the old method of drawing the tin lines as entities. So now you can do edits like swapping edges quickly, even on large tins. There's also a new option to color the break line edges differently. For updating the tin input data, you can now edit the input selection set using tin history. And you can add points by range or point group. And any break lines from field to finish within the point range are added automatically. So if you've built a tin for a large project and then get a new survey from another day, you can add the new points and break lines to the tin. The file extension for cross sections is changed to XSCT to avoid conflicts with email servers. You can still use SCT. Draw sections has a new option to hatch subgrades and to label horizontal distances. For row design, there's a new command to convert 3D polylines into row design files for the template point, center line, and profile. So if you've got a 3D polyline for a template point, like a ditch bottom, you can easily use this in the row design. For doing a row design onto an existing road, there's a new option to skip the first template grade that follows the existing road. For output, there's a new option to create solid models for the subgrades, and Road Network has a new method to draw 2D template polylines. Parking Perimeter Tools is a new command to add islands, bump outs, and curb returns to a parking perimeter polyline. For 3D polylines, there's a new command to apply a cross-section template, like for a curb. It can draw the parallel polylines in both 3D and 2D. EPA SWIM is a new processing option for calculating flows for a sewer network model. You can also create an EPA SWIM project file from the sewer network model. You can now run HECRAS directly inside Carlson. There are assumed some new methods for defining the banks. You can draw the water line directly to CAD. The new routine also handles culverts and bridges. The GIS routines now support more databases, including SQLite and SpatialLite, which you can use with other programs like QGIS. There are also new import routines for OpenGIS GML and line work from Esri GeoDatabase. For labeling GIS attribute polylines, there's a new option to create a table of the data with tag labels on the polylines. For utility network, the profile editor now shows any crossings, and there's a new function to route the profile around the crossing. There are many more label controls and more types of utilities to choose from. There's a new function to import multiple connection points. For the conflict check, you can set up order rules to check, such as water lines must be above sanitary. Solid model to IFC is a new command that lets you output a solid model to BIM. You can use this to output a surface model with subgrade thicknesses. The block model viewer shows a legend of the grade names and their colors. You can now switch the grade parameters to use for viewing without exiting the command. You can also define a new grade parameter by attribute value range while in the viewer. There's a new block model command to do a crop. There are a lot of updates to the Varigram 3D, including the ability to handle multiple strata and attributes at once, data point compositing to combine samples within a tolerance, geostatistical analysis with cross variograms and correlograms 
a method to auto-fit a model variogram, and output options for data pairs and lag results. The 3D pick for scheduling within surface equipment timing has several upgrades, including the ability to define custom attribute equations to display in the charts, settings for the values to show on the tooltips, and undo. The speed is greatly improved and you can now pick assignments in a second or two even on projects with 35,000 pit blocks. Graphic drill hole report can now draw custom attribute symbols at the right position on the drill hole, such as for a water table symbol. There's also a new option to create a legend of the strata and hatch patterns. For solids, there's a new option to create the solid using a Carlson surface object which is better performance than drawing as 3D faces, especially on large models. There are new commands to create solid models, including by grade from a block model and by 3D triangulation from a cloud of points. There's a new edit solid by section model for using a series of slices through a solid model to make the edits. Point cloud input has a new method to filter the points on import, which is very handy when the source data needs cleanup. There's a new smooth points routine that uses a moving least squares method and has good results so that you can get smoother contours even from noisy data. Pole snap is a new point method where you pick once on the pole to get the XY center of the pole and pick a second point to set the elevation. Building corner snap is another new point method where you pick on one wall and then pick on the other wall. The program finds the best fit planes on both walls and intersects these planes to find the corner. Then you pick to set the elevation. There are new functions for solids including contour, section, and profile. There's a new profile from cloud routine that samples the cloud at an interval and uses a specified snap method. Finally, point cloud has a new point reduction method that uses a smart spatial method to keep uniform density. We hope that you like Carlson 2020. For more details on the improvements, visit our website at the address shown here. For Carlson customers on maintenance, you will receive an email with your Carlson 2020 serial numbers. You can also go to our website to look up your new serial numbers. The latest Carlson 2020 download will also be posted on our website. Thanks for watching.